let me take a deep breath here and and tell you what I think, why I believe this is, as you said a, a minute ago, very different from previous terror attacks, because it, it happened in a certain context. And, um, and that context is that we've had the Abraham Accords, where a number of Arab states have made formal peace with Israel. So now it's getting to be a large number. We've got you, we, we had Egypt and Jordan, but now we've got the UAE and Morocco and Bahrain and these other countries. And then, of course, the rumors have been rife, and, and they're not just rumors, that, uh, that Saudi Arabia was moving toward yeah. um, a peace deal with Israel that would have included some kind of new arrangement for the Palestinians. And so Saudi was going to have the opportunity to appear to be the benefactor uh, and in fact, be the benefactor of the Palestinians. And this is something that Iran found profoundly threatening. And so Hamas, you know, unclear how much they coordinated, how much this was driven mm -hmm. by Iran and how much was independently done by Hamas. Obviously, Hamas doesn't need a reason to want to um, to want to uh, attack and, and kill and, and, and uh, uh, torture Israelis. But... I believe there is a bigger, I'm sorry for filibustering. No, but, no, no. You know, um, I think there is a bigger project here, which is, so they want to derail this peace deal, right? It's it's not about they're frustrated at the lack right. of progress toward right. peace. Right. They're frustrated at the at the progress toward peace. Exactly. Right? So they want to they want to derail that. They want they want war in the region and they want to make sure that there's a really big long war which will feature um Israelis killing Palestinians that, that can be on the nightly news which is going to night. happen it has to happen right mm -hmm. and they made sure of that by making this attack so vicious so comprehensive so barbaric that no Israeli government can resist now the calls from within the society to crush Hamas. And so they are going to have to do what Israel has never wanted to do and has never done. They pulled out of Gaza in 2005 completely. You know, that whole narrative about an occupation is false. There's no occupation there. There was a, boy, uh, a, um, a blockade of certain things going into Gaza, like weapons, all the, you know, well, they're, and, they're, and they're, you know what the talking point is now is that is the Gaza is this open air prison. Open that, air yeah, prison. Yeah, yeah. This, that is, is, this is the this is the go to part uh, talking I point know. now, right? I yeah. know. And so bear in mind, this blockade was imposed by Egypt and Israel, and it was because they were using all of these weapons to carry out attacks yeah. on both countries. Yeah. Um, and so, but food, medicine, all that stuff went in there. Also, water, electricity, which now the Israelis are cutting off. Anyway, what Hamas's plan here is, is to force Israel to respond with terrible ferocity and then to use that as a way to pull the, um, the Palestinians on the West Bank into the fight and Hezbollah on the northern border in Lebanon into the fight and possibly even destabilize the peace treaties that Israel has with Egypt and Jordan. And, you know, sitting here right now, Charlie, I'm not sure that they won't succeed. No, um, it's 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 certainly conceivable that, it, that that this all of this might happen because the you and you, you I think you put your finger on it when you had the, the piece in the bulwark over the weekend. Right now, international sympathy is overwhelmingly pro Israel. But when this begins, We've seen this before. Um, there are people right. who are on the fence. There are people who are going to react to this. There's going to be a lot of moral equivalency, a lot of both sidesism. Um, support for Israel, I think, is pretty broad, but I think that there are some warning signs. I have to tell you two things. N number one, um, and again, I, I, I quote Nick Cataggio in my, in my newsletter, who points out that right now, elected Democrats are solidly behind Israel. I mean, they really covered themselves, I think, pretty well. But particularly uh, with the Democratic base and younger voters, I think you're seeing some erosion. Also, I have to tell you, I have been, there's a lot of shocking elements to this. I, I don't want to, you know, gloss over me. The whole attack was a shock. The brutality, the vicious was a shock. I actually, and maybe this is a sign of my naivete, I was I was shocked by um, 
some of the things coming from uh, the left-wing pro-Palestinian movement, you know, the Democratic Socialists of, of America rallies, the kinds of things that you're seeing, the rhetoric you're seeing in Times Square in New York, justifying and cheering the attacks, mocking uh, the victims. The, uh, the video out of Sydney, Australia, where people are chanting, you know, um, F the Jews, gas the Jews. Um, the, this, the statement by all those student organizations at Harvard blaming Israel alone for the attack. So there's, there's going to have to be some sort of a reckoning. Um, but you, your, your thoughts? I mean, I, I just think that, that the progressive left's react to this was, reaction to this was, was eye-opening and, and shocking. Shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Really kind of shocking. I mean, you know, you, those groups at Harvard, now I looked at the list and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, the, the uh, Students for Palestine yeah. and the, you know, Asian Alliance and things like that. And, and I did so, so, and maybe, you know, I'm hoping that it's, you know, maybe it's 75 students who are all members of these various organizations mm -hmm. and they just made it look like yeah. more than it is. Maybe. Uh, I, I'll wait with eagerness to see if any other um, student groups from Harvard speak up. But, you know, it is it is so what is, as I said earlier about that woman on Twitter, what is so difficult about saying, you know, attacking civilians on purpose, yeah. which is obviously what Hamas is doing here. You know, I mean, so much of the both sides is and says, well, Israel kills children and and Palestinian children. And then, you know, you say, well, but that's not intentional. That's, uh, you know, collateral damage right. doesn't mean it's not a big. Yeah, this you know, was moral not, this issue, was not collateral damage. This, this was not target. Collateral damage. The, the atrocity exactly. was the point, right? It exactly. was the point. Yeah. And if you cannot make those distinctions, I, I, you know, the mind boggles. Um, and it, it really becomes something very, very evil when you are cheering uh, the attacks on on uh you know innocent human beings what cause is you know is worth would justify that there is no cause that would justify that and i was hoping you know you know when when israel does react look when, when you're attacked like that you're it, it it activates your lizard brain right and and you definitely see that you know and i saw it in some of the comments from pro israel you know people online over the weekend you know it's like Show no mercy, right. you know, crush them, kill them. And that is the lizard brain speaking. And that is understandable as a human reaction to this kind of an atrocity. But this is why when we are civilized people, we have to not act on that immediately. You have to take a beat and say, okay, this, you know, as, as bitter and heartbroken as we are, and as much as we know, we do have to take, um, we do have to retaliate and take revenge. You would you would never lower yourself to the level of what the, those um it's savages so hard. did